Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This episode, we're going to be covering some slight game trade magazine news, as well as discuss things from ooh, our past or Hero Clicks past in a generic gallery where we cover, you guessed it, the past keyword. This is episode 419. I'm your groovy ranch hand, Calder Ness. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how six yeah. people think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm going to make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Hey, Google, Let's attack Jimmy, because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Click singles and sale products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me, like always, in the studio is my co-host, your Dial H Hero Clicks champion, Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? I remember when they made the Nintendo... Ooh. Grandpa, go to bed. Grandpa, it's time for your nap. Do you guys still play oh, the the Pac-Mans and the ghost game? Too ghost spooky game. for me. Goodness. Simeon, what made you happy this week? I do uh, be gobbling man. up all them little dots, though. Oh, jeez. Like candy. Um, actually, dots are like one candy I used to love, and now I hate. I can't stand anything... That's excessively sticky. And that's most like gummy candy. And this might be controversial, but gummy candy has gone way downhill in my like opinion of candies. I like I, which I, gummy candies are you talking about? Which ones have uh, gone downhill? Like the weird, like the so like the O's rings and like gummy yeah, worms? What anything, do you mean? Like yeah, gummy worms, worms. Anything that's gummy in the title, gummy bears, anything that is not like does not feel like a food. There's nothing in nature that you bite into and has the consistency of a peach ring. There's nothing in nature where like you're like, ooh, chewy, sweet rubber. <laughs> like <laughs> it's just something in my brain goes like, that's not food. And then I don't like it anymore. And, yeah, so, like, gummy worms have gone out the window. I think, you know, I did eat at one point in my life. Uh, over the course of, like, two work days, five okay. pounds of sour gummy worms. And that oh my probably gosh. helped exacerbate my hatred for gummy candies. Because, That's, yeah. Uh, it upset your stomach really bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Luckily, I was I was young enough that, you know, it just, I don't know. I don't know what it did to me. Look at me. Look at me now clearly helped me become the man i am today i uh but no i don't know how i got on that subject from dots Brought up all big and strong stop sticking to my teeth, candy stop it if i if i want candy i want it to be like a snap a crackle perhaps a pop like crunch Gosh. bars dial h for hero clicks is brought to you by nestle crunch i like a and... rice crisp yes when you said crunch bar which is a totally is different not? thing than a rice crispy bar. Well, a crunch bar is a chocolate bar that has rice in it. Yeah, rice bits. But it's not it's like Snap Crackle Pop, which is purely uh, a rice crispy. Tr- Those well, have been popular recently. Those have been I, a lot I will of say, uh, not the those? prepackaged one, but like a homemade rice crispy. You add like a little bit extra Ooh. butter, a little bit extra marshmallow fluff. So it's pretty good. Because my family is grossly American. What we did. Um, we would make them right, and then we would mix in uh, a ton of chocolate and peanut butter. Sure. And then yeah, we yeah. ate them, and that was delicious. That was actually incredible. Those are yeah. my favorite ways to eat Rice Krispie treats. Those and uh, popcorn balls. Like you can throw. That's like the opposite of a fruit cake. Where a fruit cake, you just like add too much stuff, and then it's garbage. Right. Uh, yeah, what Rice Krispie here? and like popcorn balls. You just keep adding random bits of like. Oh, is that a raisin? Don't Junk. care. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just. We'll it's say, uh, good. I went through a long period of my life where if I got a popcorn ball for Halloween, I'd be like, what is this garbage? This isn't candy. Why would you do this to me? And I've never actually taken a bite of one. And it's like, oh, it's not bad. I no. should, I should maybe, perhaps I judged you too harshly, popcorn ball. Yeah. And doubles <laughs> like, as a self defense weapon. So, oh, they're thick. They're kind of <laughs> hefty and like dirty yeah. put That's together. No tortilla slap. Um, you slap someone with a popcorn oh, ball, gosh, they're going the down for the count. Oh, no. Oh, absolutely. You're going to give them a concussion if you, like, 
you like yeah. baseball pitch a popcorn ball at someone, they're going down. Also, probably, the like, don't quote me on this, but probably um, believed to cause cancer in California, the state of California. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. Well, as as most, we've had a discussion about are. this. Almost everything causes cancer in California. Yeah, they get the um, sun. The sun hits them different. Yeah, the sun, it's the angles, trajectory, the ocean. I don't know what it is. Hey, this is a HeroClix podcast, but legally we do have to go over what made us happy. This which may or may not be HeroClix related. Um, so, Simeon, why don't you start so, us off with that? I've got a, I thought I've got a that... cavity from listening to us talk about <laughs> yeah. this junk. Oh, these are all just the candies I hate. Um, <laughs> how could you spend so much time talking about candies you don't even like? Uh, so, what made me happy this week was... I got a bark box in the mail. Okay. You ever you ever get loot crate things, Calder? You get ooh, excited. Sure. You're yep. like, ooh, Mystery. it's Mystery the box. it's the like X brand loot crate. It's got like, mm-hmm. these things in it. Pretty cool. Um, always fun to see. There was a Jurassic Bark themed loot or not mm-hmm. loot crate, not loot crate, uh, bark box, whatever. Uh, the dog version of loot crate, um, but it came with this like big old rubber dinosaur egg that's huge it's like the size of a football but it's shaped like an egg and like is there anything in it nope it's just hard rubber and my dog can't get enough of it he like kicks it around and chases it and it's hilarious because he can't fit it in his mouth surprisingly he has a big mouth but can't fit it in there um came with like a insect and amber bouncy ball like the fun the mosquito and amber bouncy ball. It came with a disclaimer right. that was like the plush toy inside is not a dog toy. If you see your dog get like the toy, please take it away from them. Oh, like, oh, oh no! You, you put a toy inside of a toy, and in, in the hopes that the dog would not get to that, which my dog definitely will at some point. Um, and then let's see, there's like some like Jurassic treats and like random stuff. Uh, just like some random like little dino chewies but it was it was hilarious because it did come in like this like really fun little box where it was like the jurassic park logo and stuff um i don't normally do subscription boxes we got this one specifically because this month was the jurassic park one uh but i don't normally do like loot crates or anything i forgot how fun those are like how like it's literally just like random christmas presents that you get you pay for, but <laughs> so you don't right. just get them, but you, you pay for them and then you just open it and it's like, oh, wow, look at this, look at that. Wow. And most of the time they already show you what's in it, but um, I was somewhat oblivious to what all was in this one. Uh, then the other thing that made me happy this week, other than all of that stuff, uh, I planted a bunch of wildflowers and some vining leaves on my lattice out in the yard and thanks to the torrential rains and like hundred plus degree weather that's been back and forth for the last couple of weeks. Uh, it's like these plants are on miracle grow. They have been like, just like shooting up like crazy because they, one day they'll be wilting because it's 105. And then the next day it's like 70 and torrential downpour. And then the next day it's 105 again. So apparently it was so sad in one sentence. I was like, oh, no. Yeah. Poor little guys. I managed to bring weather in there. I always do. But, yeah, the weather has made me happy because it made my plants happy. That's good because weather's not made me happy. It's been like 100 degrees the last few days. Yeah, it's miserable. Awful. And, like, humid. So humid. Um, These Florida so, people think they've got it bad. They don't even know. They clearly don't know. I don't even want to think about how hot it is down there. Yikes. Um. Oh man, that's dope. I like, I like mystery boxes. So it's always fun when you, especially when you don't get it spoiled for you. And you're like, oh, look at all this neat stuff. Um, and it's pretty cool. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure Milo was like, yeah. Oh, he was I over the moon up. when I pulled that. Giant oh yeah. Egg out. He was like, oh yeah. What is that? And I threw it in the yard, and he was like, yeah, and like sprinted yeah. at it and just started like kicking it because he can't fit in his mouth. Oh sure, yeah. Now Heck like, yeah, nice. He normally plays tug or keep away. Well, he can't really yeah. fit it in his mouth to keep away so now he just like stands over it and guards it and he's like take it from me try and take it from me gosh look how i have my legs locked around it you can't take it that's his new game okay much different he's he's adapted he's yeah 
evolve. I guess life, if you I will. found a way life for him to found a way. play a different game. <laughs> yeah, quite I, a clever girl that Milo boy. Yeah, that boy is that that male dog is. Um. All right, yeah, those are all the quotes uh, I know. Yeah, that was good stuff. It was good stuff to me. Uh, no, okay, so I'm gonna be happy this week. Uh, quick shout out to Evil Dead. I completed the final mission to off socked. Uh, but we finally have Lord Arthur unlocked, which is us, a leader class that I've really been waiting to play. Not waiting, but wanting to play, and I've especially wanted to play him. He's like the first character that's a non-Ash Williams character in the game that I've been like actually dying to, to play, that I'm actually excited for. I did reach level 25 with my leader Ash. With his skill tree routes, I wanted to make him a tank. So a lot of his stuff is in, uh, you know... Reducing damage, incoming damage, uh, buffing his overall health percentage, his shield percentage, stuff like that, um, which is fun. So I've been been enjoying Evil Dead, but a quick tangent story that shouldn't be too long, and it is HeroClix related, so I don't feel too bad about it, but uh, my family does this thing. um, They give out a scholarship every year, so we had scholarship interviews. um, Some of these kids, I shouldn't even say kids, some of them are like only a year or two younger than I am, but I'm going to say kids, so I feel old. Um, and obviously, me, someone who's never been to college or any secondary education, and you know, uh, is of course clearly um, qualified to decide whether or not these kids get a uh, college scholarship. It's not for that much, um, but still, I, I always feel like uh, the odd man out here. So I'm listening to them, whatever, and the parameters that we each had to come up with like a handful of questions that we would like consistently ask the interviewee. And so most of these people are going uh, for some type of teaching degree. Uh, Cause my grandparents thing, they were both teachers. And what I asked every, every time without fail, and I would ask other questions if the person was actually interesting enough to, to deserve another question to be asked. Um, but I asked them what, what is their favorite game? This is pretty simple, pretty simple question. Pretty, pretty obvious nerd hobby. I wasn't like, what's your favorite superhero? You know, I wasn't making it too much about myself um, for these no, people. Leaves, but I was like, what's your favorite game? Options of like Monopoly, right. Yahtzee, you know, the normal. Yeah. yeah. Heard a lot of Monopoly. Games. People, yeah. people mentioned Monopoly, and I was like, yeah, whatever. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Don't give them anything. Don't give that piece of anything. Sorry, um, community chest is empty for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, one person said like hacky sack, and I was like, eh, "Sure, yeah, why not?" I guess. That's Before like after up with balloons, weed. though, is that really yeah. a game, or is that just right. a weird hobby? Um, I was like, one of the coolest ones. This dude was uh, has like uh, favorite games, and to be fair, he started with Monopoly, but he's like probably just because it's nostalgic. And I'm like, okay, sure, I'll, I'll give you a pass on that. Uh, one was this like game his uncle had made for someone in his family. It was really interesting. And then one was like Euchre, and I was like, dang. I haven't heard someone mention Euchre in a hot minute. Okay, cool. Um, but uh, one person, this girl, Jaslyn, I'm uh, not going to totally ox her, though. I don't remember her last name. Uh, but she was the only person all day to be like, well, what's your favorite game? And I was like, well, I'm so glad well, you well, asked well. the question back to me. I got to go on a mini Heroclix tangent in front of my, my family uh, in front of other teachers who were, were more qualified than 400 me there. episodes of a podcast that podcast. I like. Yeah, I did not, I didn't drop the podcast. I didn't do that. I wasn't that uh, obnoxious about it. Um, I, think, I think everybody would have probably kicked me out if I would have done that. <laughs> but I was like, well, let's see this game called Hero Clicks. And then I went into it a little bit and I'm like, but now I'm seeing the eyes of my fellow cohorts glaze over. I'll give it back to you. Um, but she was like, I don't know if she was pretending to be interested. Okay, she was probably pretending to be interested. She was like, yeah, I just kind of want that scholarship money, though. So, go off, nerd boy, I guess. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, that was pretty fun. That that was... Not it ma- it made me happy. Uh, the one person all day... Oh, no, I'll, I'll say this. Um, another person I asked, I was like, so what's your favorite game? And she went, oh, definitely Mario Kart. I've got a lot of favorite, you know, times in Mario Kart. And I was like, okay, well, who do you normally pick in Mario Kart? She's like, oh probably one of the princesses and i'm like okay um what's your favorite track on mario kart and she's like oh um beach one i was like okay what's your least favorite track on mario kart she's like i'll probably boozer's castle and i'm like i'm sorry yeah good old i'm sorry say say that again who's who's castle she's like yeah boozer's castle i'm like okay Uh, i want to be like have you played have you ever played mario kart are you sure are you to be fair 
at no point in Mario Kart do they say out loud how Bowser. to pronounce Bowser. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. I um, guess that's fair. But yeah, that is, I will, to her credit, one of my least favorite tracks. Um, although, like, Beach would not have been Blue's my favorite. Castle. Obviously, yeah, Rainbow dude, Road not. is, like, the, the gold standard as far as Mario Kart tracks go. Uh, I'm surprised that like, she was talking about the, like, I'm assuming the N64 version, because that's where both of those appear. There's probably been a I feel like they appear castle like every, beach. every version yeah. in every Mario Kart. Right? Yeah, that might just be on me for only having played the okay. one. Sorry, I, but, um, I don't want a power-up that gives my cart wings. Sorry, Switch. Spider. All right. Yeah. Well, since we've been talking for like 15 minutes... Let's, uh, let's actually get into the show, shall we? Let's start off with a little bit of news. Simeon. Simeon, Simeon, Simeon. Game Trade Magazine came out, which has some beautiful blurry pictures uh, for what it's supposed to maybe look like, uh, which is cool. It's so fun. Get some blurry little Game Trade Magazine pictures. Aren't you excited, Simeon? So we have yeah. Apocalypse and Captain Britain. Talk about Apocalypse yeah. is, is quite a lot, so I'll let you handle him. There's a lot going on there. Yeah, organized play Apocalypse. He is the one of the, I believe, grand prizes. So from Ooh. the organized play, he is number 209. And I'll just say, going into this set, before we knew what the distribution was what the rarities were whatever ever we had seen this sculpt and i was like that is a really cool sculpt and i still think as far as apocalypse goes really cool sculpt it's probably one of like the best looking digital renderings i've seen uh dial matches dial is probably i don't know sculpt's cool but dial is like pretty pretty impressive so Set number 209 from the standard organized play kit. He comes in at 295, 145, and a mere 35 points. Uh, has the optional f- plus five point trait that is sword bearer, so he can start with any of the X of Swords equipments. Uh, and if you say otherwise, uh, Nana Nana Boo Boo, I don't care about your opinion. Uh, he can start with any of the equipments okay. in this set. Uh, so what else does he got? Cool sculpt. He's got three point lines. Uh, for 295 points, he's 11 clicks long. Uh, his 145 point line, so almost, well, yeah, right hand in half point value, starts on click four. And then his 35 point line starts on click nine, where he's only got three clicks left. Um, four, <laughs> I'll go with the 295 point line first. There's a lot to take off with this guy. So, 7 range, 2 lightning bolts, cosmic energy, and mystics team ability. He has the horseman, mystical, past, ruler, warrior, and X-Men keywords. Uh, real name, En Um He has a single trait that is Krakoa is for all mutants. And this is a big one because, as you guys know, multiple point lines, having, well... So he has two traits. He has the optional trait that's the plus five points, but technically that is just a trait. And then if you don't pay the points, it's still there. It just doesn't affect him. Um, But anyhow, the optional trait is the plus five points. The trait that is on all three point values, even the 35 point value, is Krakoa's for all mutants, Empower Enhancement. Already off to a good start, but there's way more text than that. When determining theme teams, characters with the Arako keyword gain the X-Men keyword, which means pretty much this whole set, like with the exception of, I don't know, maybe like 10 or 15 characters, almost this whole set will be a theme team if you play this guy. Um, But that's not all. He also has, when a friendly character with the X-Men keyword, which is also Arako thanks to his own trait, would be hit by a close attack if they can use Blades Claws Fangs they may roll a d6 if they do and the result is greater than the attacker's printed damage value they evade the attack now this is not super senses this is it's only for close attacks but this is not super senses um this is you know a character's got three damage and they have two empowers they're dealing five but their printed damage is three so 
if you have blades claws fangs if you like have the ability to use blades claws fangs uh you get to roll a d6 just because this guy's on the game like on the board and you know if they have three damage or four damage you succeed on a four through six or five through six like it's essentially an extra rollout that can't be outwitted. You could outwit Blades, Claws, Fangs. That would be one way to get rid of it. That's true. Yeah, I guess you'd have but to. Yeah. Weird way to... <laughs> I'm going to outwit your Blades so that I can possibly <laughs> so can't roll you. out. Yeah. Outwitting oh, an attack power world. so that you can... Uh, you don't have as many rollouts. All right. That's his big trait. Uh, he's not unique, so... You could potentially play two of these guys at one really not? each. Oh my, that's gross. Yeah. And I, uh, each could have a sword. Uh, Any close attacks they could roll out. But then also, let's let's skip down to his special defense power, um, which he has on clicks two and three, click eight, and his last click, click eleven. So he's got four of these, two of them back to back, clicks two and three. It is destructive parry. Stop invincible super senses. Each time this click is revealed due to taking damage from an attack, KO an object equipped to the attacker. If the attacker was not equipped, deal them one penetrating damage. Mm. So that means if your opponent hits you, doesn't matter, you know, if they're using the object to hit you or not, like the special uh, equipment or not. If they hit you and they push you to one of these stop clicks, not only do they not deal enough damage to, like, you know, they can't knock you through the stop click, um, but once the stop click's revealed, you just KO that equipment. And if they're not equipped, they get dealt one pen damage plus the Mystic's damage that they're already taking from him naturally. And then his last special power is the External Gate. Flurry, phasing teleport. When Apocalypse uses flurry, phasing teleport. Oops, sorry. Uh, when Apocalypse uses phasing teleport, after resolutions, he may make a close attack. So this isn't the same as Vision Prime, the Vision. Uh, he can't flurry with this, but he does get to phase top dial 12, uh, second dial 10, or 35 points, 8, and then make a close attack. Obviously, can start with one of the blades. Uh, what does his dial look like? Well, it's a real hard dial to chew through. Top dial, he's a 12, 13, 20 defense, 6 damage with outwit, invincible, and psychic blast. He has that special speed power on his first two clicks. Every starting line, he has that special speed power I just listed off. Um, obviously, he hits his stop click, goes to steel energy with 5 damage outwit, and then still has that special speed power. Click 3, also his stop click. Also, steel energy with charge, double lightning bolt, so like multi target if you need to. Five damage with outwit. If you manage to knock him to his second starting line, which is 145 points, he goes back to that phasing teleport speed power, back to penetrating psychic blast, 19 invincible, four damage probability control, and then it's a lot more steel energy until his next stop click on click eight. Uh, one more click of invincible. A couple of clicks of invinci- and vulnerability, so really, over half his dial is invincible, and out of that, four of those are like double protected outwit. I mean, it's technically already protected outwit from cosmic energy, but uh, stop click and protected outwit from cosmic energy. So hard to chew through. Uh, his bottom dial, his thirty-five point line is just that phasing close attack power flurry traded uh of course still has traded empower enhancement for 35 points can still add plus five points so 40 points to have a sword so that he has potentially two rollouts when he hits his stop clicks mm. um invulnerability leadership on his 35 point line weird how bottom dial he's a leader top dial he's big damage kind of like 13 for six is kind of like crazy uh am i ever rolling blades with that Maybe, because the minimum I'm going to do is five. So if I have something like the Muramasa Blade, and I roll up one, two, three, I'm dealing five, and you can't use your defense. I don't know what his sword does. Actually, it's pretty good, then. Yeah, Yeah. certain swords would be good as it. I was about to say, I'm like, well, he does six anyways. But you're like, nah. Yeah. Five is still good. And then, like, whatever (laughs) the weird sword blade's ability is, you know. When uh, the swords we've seen. uh, Dang. 
so far, like, so there's Mercy that is, once per turn, this character's attack, you can re-roll the attack, which is cool. There's the Muramasa, which is on a 1 through 3 hit character, can't use defense powers until the beginning of your next turn. And then Seducer, where it is, uh, this character uses blades. After resolutions, this character may use mind control as free, which is pretty good for somebody with a top dial 13 attack. Uh, definitely easy to do that. But yeah, that's Apocalypse. That's he is going to be, uh, as far as we know, as far as I can tell, a grand prize from the solicit. Um, definitely try and participate in all three months so that you can get your hands on one of these. Uh, if you're lucky enough to judge a venue and you just get granted one of these, well, you know, that's cool too because he's going to be a fun figure. I think he'll be super competitive, and I think he's one of the few 300-point figures I would actually play as like a boss battle situation kind of thing. You know, build a 300-point yeah. team, try and take down Apocalypse. Yeah. I, I would think so. Like, for what he does for 300 points... And how much with all the stop clicks and everything to chew through, and just gosh, dude, that that two ninety five with two inst with four stop clicks, two back to back, and all that steel energy mixed in there, pretty gross. Thank goodness there's breaks in that steel energy, at least I guess. But like, any flurry, so nah. Ugh. Ugh. Well, that's. Gross. That's assuming there's not going to be a sword that gives you like steel energy, right? Or something. Also, that who knows? Yeah. Once we get all twenty swords, I don't know what all these swords are going to do. Crazy, this guy can be. It looks um, like a pain. I, I honestly, I could see him being like a, technically a double rollout for close attacks, at least. True. Ah, oh, painful. I hate it. Yeah, dude. Yeah, no, it's disgusting. I, I could see him be, you know, that 35, 40 point filler on like every X Men. X Men is so strong. I hate X Men so much. They, they're yeah. just, they've always been strong. They're just get stronger and stronger. Then, like, he could be the new, you no know, point denial, in mind type figure. Yeah, play him you know? at 300 like points, that, phase up, kill something, right there, phase dude. away. What are they going to do? Eat, eat 11 clicks of right? mystics? Like, that's. 11 clicks of mystics with healing, and then, well, it's not even just mystics, but it's also the penetrating yeah. damage. Also, when they yeah, get, the, the activation like, from... The, or uh, it is only once when, uh, when the click is first revealed. Oh, so it mind. is only each time each click is revealed. But you okay. can potentially like heal off, steal, stop, take another mystics. Oh, but yeah, when they, when they first hit you to each stop click, that's double yeah. mystics, essentially. It's disgusting. It's so good, but... Yeah, and he's power cosmic, of course. What a, yeah, and he doesn't look like a green booger or, you know. Yeah, and he looks a thousand times cooler than you don't mind. Yeah, this is a dope sculpt. This is a end-month prize, like, figure and sculpt. This thing is cool. This is really cool. I'm <sighs> hoping they... Yeah, I hate I'm it. I'm hoping all the uh, LEs have not necessarily the, the same power level, but the same level of flavor. Because it just... Uh, he does something at least flavor, so yeah. unique, which... I think that's unique to him, so I don't think we'll be seeing a ton of like rollout blade yeah. stuff. But uh, the whole, even be, besides his trait, the whole like phasing close attack thing, uh, using the external gate, the destructive parry, right? Where it's you know, destroy you. your sword when you you hit me, but I like destroy your sword or whatever you're equipped with. That's pretty cool. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the old super rare zero forty five Captain Britain. But the hair like Admiral Holdo from Last Jedi. And uh, she got some cool yellow sword. She got some cool uh, purple shield. Let's go old Lizzie Braddock. I can't remember. I believe that's the Twilight one, but yeah, I can't. No. I don't have the I've never swords seen those movies. pulled up. Um, so, he is 80 points. Eight clicks of life, which I really like. Really enjoy this. Excalibur martial artist, mystical and X-Men keywords, flight. For only special symbol, she got three range and the X Men team ability. One bolt, though. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, optional trait is guess what? Plus five points, sword bearer. This character can start the game with any sword equipment equipped. And she's got two traits. So before we get into those traits, let's go ahead and check out her dial. Uh, she got five clicks of charge, followed by three clicks of plasticity. An entire dial of precision strike, where she is an 11 attack until click five, and then a 10 attack for the rest of it. She is invincible for her first three clicks. And then she's got combat reflexes the rest of the dial, so she softens up a little bit. And then she's got five clicks of outwit, and then three clicks of empower. 
Uh, so an interesting dial. Interesting. But she's a 10, 11, 18, 3 top dial, which, of course, you know, blades roll, whatever else. Traded blades if you're playing at 85 points. What are other traits? Mystics, but only triggers during range attacks. Captain Britain has safeguard mystics, which is good for down dial, I suppose. Um, but it's the same thing Excalibur trait that Excalibur has been getting. So, sure. And then the other one is for Queen and Country, willpower, but succeeds on a 4 through 6. When Captain Britain uses it and succeeds, you may also remove an action token from a friendly character within range. Uh, reminder, her range is a amazing 3 range, so a little bit of balancing going on here. But a 4 through 6 willpower is really dope on this figure. It keeps her moving, keeps her active. Uh, that's her 80-point line. On her 40-point line, she is going to be just 4 clicks long, and she's going to start with that 17 combat reflexes and that 2 damage outwit. Not big on the 40 point line, but at 80, someone to come in there, mess some stuff up, absorb some hits, you know, get based, plasticity with the combat reflexes, jumping back up to an 18 is pretty solid. But there's nothing crazy special about her. She's just like, you know, Psylocke, Captain Britain. Kind of, yeah. It's kind of a, a little an, Lizzie Braddock. I think she's, Lizzie. I don't know, in my opinion, so she'll probably come with the sword. Um, this was not part of like a Scott Porter unboxing. So when they preview item or figures, they don't always preview the figures with like the item that they would come with. Uh, but obviously I think she's coming with a sword as a super rare. That makes sense to me. Um, depending on what that does and just based on her dial alone, I think she's a pretty solid sealed figure like flight. 10 speed, outwit, precision strike, plus likely blades, uh, potential mystics, and safeguard mystics. I will say, I wish I had some safeguard mystics playing Disney Plus sealed, because oh yeah. there's a ton of mystics. Um, and then, yeah, four through six willpower that succeeds. When it succeeds, you can also just remove one from a friendly character within range. Not even a like shared keyword or line of fire, just within range friendly that's pretty cool especially like the bottom like 40 point dial if i'm building like a constructed team she's kind of like a little press record with a 50 50 uh remove a token from somebody oh i mean true yeah that 50 that is nice do you like it so yeah a little uh, uh a little mini super soldier serum action going on a little, a little little mini uh little mini power broker here Without any, without any setup, yeah, it it's is pretty cool. Like the power it just keeps like her team moving, which is dope. I mean, it's it's better than leadership. You know, she's got an advanced leadership. Well, it's not better. It's like a side upgrade to leadership as far as removing tokens goes. It doesn't give you an action, but yeah, it's uh, it's solid. It's fun. It's nothing crazy, I mean, but she can also take both action tokens if she's double action tokened and succeeds. She can remove both from herself too. So like. Oh yeah, you're right. Cool. I didn't say another from the character. From the character, yeah. But yeah, um, sadly, we probably won't see more organized play stuff right away. It's probably going to be a lot of the uh, main set X of Swords. So we won't see any of the cool Ellies, but we'll see, you know, more chases coming soon. We'll see more super rares. Uh, we almost have the full common, uncommon, rare stuff filled out. We are still missing one of the most important figures in the set and that is the last generic the white priestess or whatever it's called um of course the, the reason i buy into this set is absolutely the fact that we've got five generics and 20 objects so yeah a lot a lot to collect in this set dude a lot going on well let's go ahead take it back in time to one of my personal favorite segments ones we haven't done in a while and that is generic gallery why should you care keywords 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 so why should you care keywords it's only a game why do you have to be mad celebrity police past and scientist assassin soldier spy tinker tailor no they, they're not in there but you know you get it Ah, missed that. Miss Miss Scotty's voice here. Generic gallery. What is it? You may ask. We take a look at a generic keyword that we haven't taken a look at before, 
and we both make some teams out of it. One's a, one of us is going to make a Silver Age team, one of us is going to make a Modern Age team. Uh, typically, Silver is a little bit more of a casual team, might be 400, might be 300 points. And the Modern team is just kind of a, you know, whatever Modern might be competitive, might be just a normal, fun Modern team. But today we're looking at the past keyword, and I will say, Silver Age past is okay, I guess, but they fit themes. And then Modern Age past, you're like, oh, dang. There's a lot of good stuff in Modern Age Past. Keywords, that's a little wild. Um, but, like, looking at Silver Age, as far as building my team, went. There was, like, uh, yeah, all DC has for that is, let's check it, uh, Justice Society. So if it's not Justice Society, <laughs> uh, good yeah. luck trying to build a Silver Age team with JSA past keywords. And, uh, were you um, stranded on potentially an island called Themyscira for, like, the yeah. majority of your life? Because you might be in the for past. Amazon. Yeah. You'd be passed, but everybody else, nah. You and Marvel, it was, you know, Marvel's a little scattered. It's like, okay, all the Eternals have passed, whatever. Then it's like, yeah, if you were from, like, the Valley, or you are for, like, a 10 million Avenger, whatever, then you got passed, yeah. That's cool. That's cool. But if you ain't from 1602, Wow, Wow West, Marvel books, you ain't got no pass keyword. Okay. <laughs> Very, it's very wonky. The past keyword is kind of a kind of a wonky one, but there's there's some other other standoutish ones out there that I was like, ah, oh, got you existed. Cool. Yeah, it is funny oh, characters yeah. that you like. I don't remember having the past keyword because like I I remember the character fondly, but I don't remember having the past keyword because I don't normally build around it. And then I'm like, oh, that does actually make a lot of sense, like comic wise, because. Yeah. This is a super old person, like, kind of thing. Um, but, uh, yeah, also kind of bundled in with our teams. And you guys, if you've listened to a generic gallery before, you know we like to do this. We bundled in fan favorite value corner and then fan favorite hidden gems categories, which will be, uh, you know, kind of how we'll start it off with, with teams. So, Simeon, you want to get into your modern age past team, then what segment or mini segment you're doing in there as well? Yeah, so I'm going to go through my team, and I'll save my my segment okay. until very last. So That's good. That's good. Um, I'm doing the Modern Age. Uh, there's a few things that... Actually, no. I made sure that nothing will be rotating uh, come next month-ish. Oh, good stuff. So, um, first off, for 25 points, we've got Nathaniel Richards. I could have gone with, like, Rama Tut or Kang or, like, any of the any of the Nathaniel Richards throughout time, but the Fantastic Four Future Foundation rare 043 Nathaniel Richards, you might already know what he does because, honestly, he's he's pretty cool for 25 points. Uh, he's Leap Climb, 10 attack, 2 damage. That's all, like, that's all that's important. That Leap Climb is super sweet. The 2 damage, very cool. No, it's uh, Genius Intellect and Skilled Inventor, free. If Nathaniel Richards is holding an holding or adjacent to an object remove that object from the game if you do choose nathaniel richards or an adjacent friendly character and choose a standard attack power the chosen character can use the chosen power until your next turn uh this can turn him into like a tk piece this can turn him into a like blades or steel energy or or it can turn any of like the other characters on this team into one of those as well so he does have six range he does have empower his only two clicks. Uh, he has ESD and toughness for both clicks that he has for 25 points. Uh, 17 defense, so he's a 19 from range. Not too bad. Um, let's see. That, yeah, that's basically it. So he's he's handing out an attack power, standard attack power, to an adjacent friendly character mm -hmm. or himself, depending on what you need to happen. And it's cool because it just triggers from potentially an adjacent object or one that he's holding. So either way, it's pretty easy oh. to pull off. Next up, my most utility piece uh, in the set or in this build is from Marvel Disney Plus. It's 002 Skinny Steve Rogers. And I'll be surprised if Calder doesn't use this piece because what a great 15 points for past. Um, maybe only overshadowed in silver by a Meridroid. But uh, yeah skinny steve here he's got shield he's got a 15 defense with willpower and he's got leadership when he uses it friendly characters within range are considered adjacent so that's four range um and yeah since it's a theme team everybody's going to share a keyword so he can take actions off of anyone that 15 defense doesn't look super cool though so i threw on number 
the first expensive figure in the set probably, or in this build, the super rare Captain Carter, the not prime one, just the normal version. Um, I think the prime also, yeah, the prime also could fit. Mm -hmm. It would fit on past. It would just be, it'd be 35 points instead of uh, 60 point, or it'd be 40 points instead of 60 points. Uh, depending on which dial you went with. But I really like this Captain Carter for two reasons. One, I'm starting her with the shield, so it's plus, plus five points. She gets defend, um, and then she gets a plus one for all adjacent friendly characters because she has traded defend. She has that unique modifier, non-adjacent friendly characters within range modify one, or defense plus one, so even if she's not next to them, if they're within six, they get that plus one. And then on her top dial, she has leadership and she has giant reach of six with Quake. So giant reach of six um, combined with Nathaniel Richards giving out like precision strike or, I don't know, blades or like something something fun that you like, you know, want to combine with a giant reach of six uh, really makes her, she's got an 11 square reach for close attacks. And that's not usually heard of for like stuff that's normal. Um but when Captain Carter knocks back an opposing character, she may choose the direction of knockback. So you can use that giant reach quake to knock characters closer to, like, your other attackers and stuff. All right. So now I've got a few kind of, like, supporty things. I've got the Agnes from the Disney Plus set. She has TK. She has stealth, two lightning bolts. She's got that mastermind, and then most importantly, she has Senor Scratchy, the free generate Senor Scratchy bystander, max one. Uh, she's got the spooktacular trait that is shape change, and when she uses it, she heals a click. And then she has a, you know, the whole standby on click six, she's got that stop. So, pretty good. I mean, all the spooktaculars, I think, are pretty solid. The thing that really makes this one stand out, in my opinion, is Senior Scratchy has Blades Claws Fangs, but you have their D6 result. He's autonomous, he's tiny size. And then he's also got enhancement and a unique modifier that are friendly adjacent characters with the mystical or celebrity keyword modify attack plus one. Um, sadly, that's mostly just going to be Agnes on this team. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, sadly, uh, we might be able to swap one character that will be able to like use it. Uh, the next heavy hitter, because I really. So far, it hasn't been really been any heavy hitters. It's mostly just Captain Carter. Big defenses, uh, some bonus stuff, some keeping characters cleared, and being able to hand out powers. But Exodus from the X-Men Rise and Fall set, uh, he's really old. He's as old as Apocalypse almost. So uh, big old X-Man dude. He has running shot, telekinesis, invulnerability, and leadership top dial. So that's the, my third leadership on this team. Seven range, one lightning bolt. He has Krakoan Revival, which will not be used at all in this team. He has overwhelming overwhelming psionic might, which gives him mind control, and then when he uses it, after resolutions, deal a hit character damage equal to Exodus's damage value, which is very cool, because that could punch through, I don't know, like that nasty Apocalypse's multi-stop clicks top tile. It would at least punch through one. Let's see. Invincible. Mm, nice. One, two. Yeah, it would get you to, like, the second one. Um, so, yeah, it just deals damage equal to Exodus's damage value. It's not damage from an attack, so it can bypass all, like, the normal rollouts and stuff. Uh, it can bypass stop clicks. It's a really solid attacker. He has a, um, just on his own, he is a... Uh, 13 no 12 square 12 square reach on his own for a running shot mind control or just 11 for four and then he does have a bottom dial of esd once per turn when a friendly character is healed or turned to their starting click heal exodus one click which is great because um good old agnes can use like tie up shenanigans and uh if she hits her shape change exodus also heals so mm. pretty good. Senior Scratchy can boost his damage to a five if you really need to hit hard. And then my final character, and this is my value corner character. So okay. this character, I'll just say who it is. It's Wonder Woman, Calder. Uh, oh, man. That could yeah. be anyone. It's Wonder Woman. I, yeah, that could be Wonder, many people. Which, which Wonder Woman could it be? Uh, 
This Wonder Woman, it comes in at 50 points, has the Wonder Woman team ability, has four range, one lightning bolt, charge top dial, with an 11 for three, but with close combat experts. So that's actually a 12 for four. And then I don't have to pay any extra, but she does have the trait Champion of Themis Era, Lasso of Truth. Uh, she can start the game with any Wonder Woman equipment equipped, but if she starts with the Lasso of Truth, when using its inca- incapacitate, all hit targets can't use damage powers until your next turn, Ooh. which is pretty fun. Uh, limiting shape change, perplex outwit, whatever it might be. Um, and she's a 12 for 4 when she does that. Well, she's a 12 for 4 normally, and then if she's incapacitating, she's just a 12 attack. Uh, but she does have the last two clicks where she sidestep super senses, and with the Wonder Woman team ability, she does have a 50-50 on that. 50 points. Um, I will say the rarity is uncommon, but uh, what do you think that this this final piece to my puzzle, this final figure on the build, what do you think it goes for? An uncommon has got to be less than a dollar. That's my guess. It's like 75 cents. Ooh, that is, yeah, that's pretty close. Uh, so if you want one without a card, you can pick this one up for 69 cents. But if you're one of those, you know, wheel and deal and I like cards with my hero clicks characters, especially when they have two traits and wonky dial stuff. Uh, well, it's going to be 79 cents. Oh, so close. Yeah. Nice. Solid. Very good. Very, very good. Cards only worth 10 cents. Yeah, yeah. Worth I love, I love that more. Part. Uh, for me, the card's worth almost as much as a figure, and I know a lot yeah. of people don't agree with <laughs> yeah. that, but I hate playing without cards. I I mean, I don't hate playing without them. I'm fine playing if the character doesn't need it. If it's just, like, printed on their dial, I'm fine with it, but yeah, it's really frustrating. I, I say a lot of times whenever this comes up, um, Heroclix cards are like socks. You don't okay. need them, but it's really uncomfortable without them. Yeah. I, you know, a mini mini tangent on the card thing, but I think that's number one. Dope team, dope value corner. We have a player at my a venue who will be like, yeah, I couldn't find any cards. I don't know where I put them. I'm just going to use HC Realm. Sound good? And it's like, sure. Yeah. Because Al's on the back of the card anyway, so go, go nuts. He's got, like, his yeah. phone on HC Realms the whole time. Just yeah, like, yeah, I'm fine what with it's that. Said. I know, like, in yeah. competitive things, they're like, Tournament, oh, like you could look up, like, HC Realms comments and get the winning edge over me. Like, if I can look up something on the internet that will help me beat you, then, like, we're not at the top tables. <laughs> I'm sorry, but, like, what am I going to look at on my phone that's going to be like, oh, I need to move here or something? Um, there is 10 points left over. You can throw on any, like, normal equipments, Red Wing, Dark Hold, yeah. uh, Cloak of Levitation, one of the shields, Super Soldier Serum, anything like that. There's a ton of I will them. say that that is what I noticed, too, in past. There's no 10-point past besides a Dr. Fake clone right yeah you can't just ah, have shoot. him on yeah but uh no nah, dude dope uh so my team 400 point team uh, i guess i'll i'll save my whatever uh for last as well but this team has a fairly fairly decent team going on should we say how do you say team? oh 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 wee, wee, wee. <laughs> uh it's kind of weird it, it can be kind of a lot of things it could be nothing i had to build 300 points you could, you could add 400 points with the stuff if you wanted to. But, um, yeah. So, first up, Shifting Focus Captain America. Second team, second week in a row, I built with Focus Captain America. This one's got the pass keyword. It allows you to get into the other ones, which is big. Starting with him is fine. You know, that's okay. Uh, but you're mostly going to want to be the uncommon for the uh, traded ESD. He's got the plus one, uh, either free. Uh, Jason from the characters modify demons plus one when targeted by a ranged combat attack or choose a side of the square that Captain America occupies and as long as he occupies that square opposing line of fires drawn through that square are blocked this is huge I've used this in maps like uh, the Tony Stark's tower from Earth X where it's got those little rooms you can block off that entire room which is really nice uh, any wall heavy map stuff like that it's a really good really good trait it also gives you access to the uh the running shot, charge, close combat expert, uh, beast, common Captain America, which is so awesome. Um, so, like, that's the first pick, 75 points. Next up, same set from Sea Wars Battle World. We have Sheriff Steve Rogers, who is mostly here for police team ability 
and his special damage power, which is no one is above the law. Leadership, when Sheriff Steve Rogers or an adjacent friendly character is attacked, the attacker cannot positively modify or replace their attack value, which is really dope because he also has got some ESD, 18 defense. So right now we're looking at that Captain America is going to be buffing everybody's defense plus one. So that means this Steve Rogers is a 21 from range, which is really good stuff, good stuff. Uh, next up, we have Shining Knight for 50 points. Mm-hmm. He's got an 18 defend, just to make sure everybody is always on that that 18. And see his charge and flight is actually a big reason we put him on here. I needed to have a flyer. I was like looking at the team, and I was like, dang, there's not a lot of flying past dudes. Um, it's a little rough. And then only past carry is Renee Tilly, who Simi and I talked about a little earlier, um, and she is 55 points. So it's a bit much big ask for this yeah. team. Without pushing, um, Renee got hurt a lot. Yeah. But. Um, and then his defense is defend and toughness. When addition from the character is missed by an opponent's attack, after resolutions heal Shining Knight one click, They don't. he doesn't have to use his defend for that. So if he gets knocked down, he's only five clicks long, but if he gets takes a hit or two or something, and then the whole point of this team is that hopefully they will be missing us with attacks, uh, he'll, he'll maybe be able to heal back up, which is really nice. Round out, before we get into my... My biggest figure here. Uh, a Maradroid for 15 points. This is who I went with Silver instead of Skinny Steve, although it was it was between both of them. Uh, but a Maradroid is just such a solid, like, 15 points. Colossal Retaliator. Uh, you know, he's 10 for 4, normally a 9 for 3. And he also is just another person that I can pick up and carry. Even though it's a kind of a sad five squares, you know, uh, I take it. I'll take it. See what I can get here. Um, but the last 110 points of my build, and this is who I who I think is a bit of a hidden gem because I think he's overlooked a lot of the time when you look at other chases, although he is a chase. I don't know. This this is kind of not the gr- best use of hidden gem, but it was him or Dr. Midnight when I was building teams that I felt were hidden gemish. So we're going with uh, Superior Foes of Spider-Man 064 spider Knight. Um, oh. I feel like uh, a lot of stuff in the Spider-Man set was was used a ton. Handstand Spidey, uh, obviously there was Chameleon, Noir. there was Spider-Man Devil OR Dino. was more important. Yeah, Devil uh, Dino. What was the, uh, I guess uh, Old Man Spider. Old Man Spider. People like, like Old Man Spider. Son. Yeah, yeah, dude. Uh, there was also a little little demon named Mephisto that maybe saw some play or something every once in a while. Yeah. Uh, Overdrive, an uncommon. Probably you saw the most play out of anyone in that set. I personally, um, um, seven frogmen's and oh gosh. 12 stilt boys. I mean, how much damage can those frogmen do now? No damage. <laughs> it's printed one. <laughs> it's so... Uh, man, if if there was a character uh, to ever get justice out of a legacy card, it yeah. would be frogman. Because, right, man... The lack of knockback damage completely, completely negated everything he was about. <sighs> now it's he's rough, just dude. a goofy man in a frog rough, costume. I feel like they could change Force Blast to make it when they, if specifically the power of Force Blast, when they knock back into something, then they get hurt. But uh, that's neither here nor there right now. But uh, yeah, so Spider Knight, 110 points. He has a special damage power, which is adjacent friendly characters can use energy shield deflection. He also has call and help in the Spider Verse, which doesn't work at all in this team because no one here is a Spider person. Uh, and then also, when he hits after resolutions, you may attach his web marker to a hit target, removing it from anywhere else. That character with the web marker can't move without breaking away. It can't automatically break away. Other characters don't have to break away from that character. And when that character successfully breaks away, you remove the web marker. So it's as if they're adjacent to Spider Knight here, which is cool. He can also copy some cool, cool abilities, which is like Avengers or Shield or Police. Or JLA, so some okay-ish abilities to copy. Um, but he gives everybody ESD, so that's mostly giving like Shining Knight ESD, a Maradroid ESD. Uh, if Captain America ever shifts to his common version of Captain America, he'll be a twenty from close and range because he's got combat reflexes top dial. So yeah, whole point of this team is like you know everybody's got a twenty-one defense from range when we shift to the uncommon Captain America, and yeah. 21 defense from range, and then the attacker cannot buff their attack value like whatsoever when they try to uh, when they try to attack anybody on the team. That's kind of the point. So it's, it's a fun little team. Also, it's now looking at it. It's all Captain Americas, Captain America, Steve Roger, Ameridroid, and then it's two knights, Shining Knight and Spider Knight. Uh, what does that say about the pass keyword? I don't know. What does it say about me as a person? I don't know. I like knights, They're fun. 
Is, it, cool. is this also a soldier theme team? Uh, no, it is not. Okay. So Shining Knight does not have soldier. And I, will not, have I will not soldier. cancel you for that alone. Then. But Captain America, Maradroid, and uh... Steve Rogers do. Yeah, I know. You're you're like, Calder, you've just built me a soldier theme. You, if you build you me build a soldier all the team, time. I told you to build me a pass team. <laughs> I need more pictures of Spider-Man. How dare you? Yeah. Uh, so that is generic gallery. That is a pass keyword. Let us know, guys, what past figures you enjoyed. I will say, uh, at least I didn't do like a past team, and then was like, "Well, we also got Doom Annihilating Conqueror is here, so it's not really a past team. It's not a Latveria <laughs> team, <laughs> you know." I didn't like Latveria. Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah, totally like past is not a Spider-Man family cheat code yet. Oh yeah, thank goodness. Um, if you guys are curious about any more versions of generic gallery and like teams we built. Uh, so far, I think this is the full list. We've done Pirate, Brute, Politician, Future, Warrior, Animal, Soldier, Celebrity, and now Past. Wow, we did Future way before Past. Ironically, better stuff in Past. I think that's good as stuff. I but, tend um, to think so. Future's like got like, it's always yeah. like prob and phasing and stuff, whereas Past True. is like, I'm going to hit you. Which, I mean, hopefully that's the way it works out. In the future, we won't hey. hit people as much. We'll just... Uh, Maybe look up probabilities and phase around places yeah teleport oh look at us we can teleport and technology is so cool look at me i'm in the metaverse oh good. <laughs> yeah anyways um that's generic gallery hope you guys enjoyed it uh let's go ahead and jump into some Ooh, ah, listener questions there are dozens of us dozens simeon now we're going to be looking at the watch list not even the watch list. It's an errata. Just period. Watching the watcher here. Watching people a little differently these days. Apparently he got in trouble for watching people a little bit too closely. Ooh, and here they were like, ah, you yeah. can't do that. That's a little creepy. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> what the, the watcher. Over there, yeah, what are you creep? doing, bro? Uh, so the super watcher has pondered the question, what if? In your turn, he would give Watcher a number of what-if tokens equal to half the result when you roll a d6. Our remove a what-if token if you do replace an adjacent friendly character with a character of equal or less points in your sideline. The replacement character must share a name with the replaced character, but now it has been said that uh, replaced characters start on their starting first line. click number. Yeah. Starting line. On the, so yeah, if not, you not click one, are, is now starting line. No, starting line. So this is a little, this is a little scary because now you can play a game and I've got my Captain America, my Black Panther, my whatever. And they took a ton of damage. And I'm like, ugh, I'm lazy. I don't want to heal them all the way up. Instead, I swap to someone who's, like, fresh. Up click now. That can be tough after trying to get through a bunch of clicks. And yeah. this is kind of the purpose of question uh, that old William Holland here asked us. He said, with Yurata on 044 Watcher, do you feel he is fixed? Or more broken, other than swapping Legacy Thanos out, if your death, to another modern or Silver Age Thanos, what other figure would you suggest for swap? Now, Thanos, I'm not as worried about. I will say... Is, there's like, how many Thanos is in modern? Nah, not a lot. War of the Realms, and then Empire. Yeah. Which, which I guess can still suck. I to... mean, it gives it gives you like, a, like way more extra clicks. Uh, oh, one, true. One big yeah. thing you will have to consider is that Watcher himself is only four clicks long with yeah. toughness. Uh, granted, he can like phase and stuff, but in order to pull this off, he does have to be next to a person and does have to take a power action. Right. So they either have to be able to get out of dodge and get next to the Watcher, or you need two turns to set it up where he can move to him, survive, and power action. Uh, but he is just, yeah, he's an 18 toughness top dial, so not hard to take care of with one shot. So he does right. have to be protected. But uh, essentially, the new Watcher... So previously, it would have been like, oh, I can, I can, you know, play Devil Dino from Superior Foes of Spider-Man at 100 points. And then uh, the, like, 75-point line, but it comes in on click one, Devil Dino from AI. And, uh, yeah, that's that's the state of people who play this game. Very annoying. Yeah. Trying to do that kind of stuff. But uh, now it's fixed-ish, so now they come in on click one, essentially giving, if you can pull this off, any character about double the dial length because it can be yeah, the same it's points. A lot. You can't bring in the exact same character. You can never do that. 
But you know what you could do, Calder? Oh, what's that to me? There's there's these shifting focus Wonder Women who uh, they all cost 75 points. Uh, you could have them sidelined for shifting focus, or you could have like one specifically sidelined for this trait. If one gets knocked down to, say, I don't know, click six, five, seven, one of those last three clicks, you uh, you watch them and bring them back to click one, and it's oh a different shifting focus lady. Wow. Um, that's wow, definitely wow. an option. Yeah. Wow. Oh, wow, 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 wow. It's so neat to me. And gosh, Thank I, uh, thanks. I hate it. That's it. No, actually, it's a cool idea. You should focus with it. But no, yeah, I think when you look at it like, oh man, if they do a great job protecting the watcher, that sucks. Like, it, it does suck to be like, oh man, I whittled Thanos down. This guy, he's gotten his 10 defense regen. I can't wait to smoke him next turn, even if he does heal, whatever. But it's like, yeah. Now he's like Captain America Thanos. He's got 19 impervious and good luck, dude. Yeah, I do. Sucks to suck. <laughs> that can really suck. But, um, you know, I think verification wise, like for the watcher, he, he has to be there. He has to be given a power action to it. Yeah. And then he's just like such a wet blanket, dude. Like he's, he's at 18. I'll also say, I think. Or click life. Think that after rotation there wouldn't have been any like pre errata. I don't think there would have been any problems after rotation because those were mostly two by twos that shared names, um, things like yeah, Bastion, Bastion Ooh, Magneto, yeah. awkward um, Colossus. There's like there was a lot of them. Nine hundred point line. What are you gonna do about it? Yeah. Mm, Nine hundred point. Mm, it's Here's, like, stop. You want to know something fun that you can do with the current wording though, Calder? And this Ooh, is that? Silver Age only. Uh, let's say I'm playing Silver Age, 400 points. Uh, I play the Fast Forces uh, Avengers Infinity Giant Girl at 300 points. You knock oh. her down to click 18. She oh. hits her stop click. I bring in the 240-point Giant Girl at click 1, who you now have to do 25 clicks of damage oh, to. But like, if I'm trying to kill that character and I'm doing all that damage, right, I have the me do all that damage to that character. Yeah, how do I not kill, just kill Watcher? Yeah, or, go kill not, Watcher yeah, first. Not yeah. Watcher, yeah. Like, and that's, I, think, yeah I think that's, that's why I'm not... Um, but I haven't played against it, so I, I don't know. You know, like, that's a tough thing. I know... He's a standard character, so I, I could put him in, like... Here, and this is if you're if you're planning on doing this team. Um, put him in something like the Thanos you're copter. Put him in, like... You know, obviously there's not going to be a ton of vehicles in Modern, but, like, yeah, put him yeah, in a vehicle. I mean, keep him safe. Um, can't keep him in a box forever, but for 25 points, he's very, what I'm actually very shallow. Gonna do is, is use him in like the worst possible way, where as soon as someone hits my high evolutionary to click two, I'm gonna turn him into the prime high yeah. evolutionary. 30 point high evolutionary comes the uh, 20 point high evolutionary. 20 point high evolutionary. <laughs> so I go from an 11 oh, attack God. with three damage, a psychic blast, running shot to incompa- or no, uh, precision strike. 11 for 2 with support and defend. I mean, it's not bad. This is better. This it's is better. Bad. It's just so much better. It's not good. It's no, it's not good. It's, it's hilarious. You go from uh, cosmic uh. energy and invincible super senses on your stop click to just super senses on your stop click. Yeah, dude. But, but now he can be placed anywhere on the map. That's true. He can really can get put him back. I mean, as far as point and denial and goes, that is like, I mean, that would be a situation where my watcher would have to roll like the five six so I can replace three characters. Because otherwise if I'm wasting my one replacement character on high evolutionary. Once, you know, I was always every time I thought about it, I was always thinking game. Like you have to do this your very first turn. Ah, who do I swap in, you know, type of deal. But thinking about it as a, a last ditch effort, you know, oh better heal up, you know, switch to someone who's now top click. I think we'll have to see some gameplay with it. Before people are like, yeah, this is a little abusive. It's bad. We need to make it. I think it's you know, the same click bad number. Silver. I think it's really bad in silver. I think that can and be pretty gross. I think that's um, simply like back yeah. to what I was saying. Like, I could play a two by two. So, like, instead of swapping into a two by two, like some people were trying to ham fist their way into, um, I can now swap from a two by two, which. If I'm playing, and again, like I'd have to find a way to keep uh, Watcher safe. But right. let's say 
from AI, I could play um, Red Hulk's a really bad option, but Normal Hulk. Okay. okay. So I'm playing. Uh, he's got a 350 point line. I'm playing 400 point silver. Uh, he's got four stop clicks at 350. I mean, you obviously could play him at lower points, but I'm, I'm talking like the extreme version of this. Um, he's got four stop clicks at 350. You finally get him down to like that really low defense. You can't quite finish him off. And then I just bring in like the Chase uh, Avengers Defenders War, who also has a stop click, gets like all these boosts, uh, has like eight clicks of life that are really hard to chew through. Ooh. I don't know. After after there dealing with go. one huge Hulk, and then having to go to a next just because some twenty five point piece was like, yeah. oh boppity boop, here's a power action. Ooh. Not great. that is annoying. Yeah, not um, great. So now that. to boil down, just to like the second uh, point of the question, how how would I use this? Uh, I did a little bit of thinking about it, and I would say if we use Rogers to put the Watcher on an Avengers team, and then I can play Avengers Swap, right, and swap out Steve Rogers for whoever else I want, you know, Sakari and Iron Man probably. Then if I play the Swappy Captain America at seventy five points, and I, I haven't totally built a team around this, so I don't know how everything else would look, then I can swap him into the. Shifty Other focus? Captain America. No, no, no. Uh, not Shifty Focus, but the Modern Age one. The Sam Wilson Captain America, if I want to. Oh, uh, the okay, Chase. Yeah, yeah. In order to get the cool, uh, you just earned this whooping. You know, hypersonic force blast thing. You know, I can swap him into that Captain sure. America if I want to. You know what I mean? Or or other caps. You know, because normally you can't swap out that floppy cap. So this would then allow you to turn him into a different Captain America of your choosing. If you don't want that 40-point Captain America. Although I will say... Not a whole lot of 40-point Captain Americas. You'd have to go uh, pretty low. 75 or 100 is where you're going to have a good options. And sadly, you can't get the 125-point dope Sam Wilson Captain America either. And sadly, you also can't get in John. But I guess John would be 80 points if you ask for the shield just by, by name. It's a bit of a bummer. But yeah, that's uh, that's who I would probably roll with as far as like swappy watcher goes. I think it'd be kind of fun. Yeah. I'd do something like, I mean, I mostly just look at it in silver um modern there's plenty of shenanigans to be had with like i mean pick a character that gets made more than five times like a year like wolverine batman um well probably not batman anymore but um any character that's got you know multiple versions in modern is something to look at but in silver it gets like it gets real crazy for me so i can start with like the wonder woman 80 aries and for 125 points, and then if you like pen sigh him for a lot, or like you knock him down dial, and I'm not comfortable where he's at, all of a sudden I can switch to uh, the Superior Foes <laughs> Spider-Man Ares at top dial, and I've got like all these traits and stuff now, and I've got like an 11 for four with uh, like penetrating damage. Hopefully, I like have you know some German soldiers and Allied soldiers by that point. That's that alone's pretty cool. Uh, I think my biggest kind of like mess around thing that I would do this would be with AI and with X Men Dark Phoenix Saga, where I'd play like the Prime Colossus at 200 points and then bring in whatever the next highest point Colossus is. Or I would play uh, so Devil Dinosaur and Moon Girl and then Devil Dinosaur and Moon Boy. Um, they're. Mm -hmm. They don't share the same printed name. They share they share real name. Oh, true, but right? Not printed name, so that's not actually one that you could do. But you could do, let's see, Giant Girl. I already said Hulk would be a pretty fun one. Um, Nebula is a weird one that you could do. Uh, Thanos again. You could do the two by two Thanos. Although starting with this one is, eh, it's kind of the better option ish depending on what thanos you want to swap to because he's got the alternate traits that you can pay for that you can't get oh if you yeah swap into the two by two so when you swap into the two by two you don't get those two traits which they're kind of fun they're kind of good red hulk would be a decent one um there's really not like most of the other ones we've already only seen a few times like groot you could play groot at the 400 point line and then swap it into 
what's the mighty Thor Groot's top dial? So that would be, let's see, that would be 20 clicks of damage that you would have to deal to the 400-point line of that Groot. And then if you swap into the mighty Thor Groot, he's got a 200-point line, so you'd have to deal another oh, 16 with a stop click. Seems fun to me. Next 500-point game, I'm playing one Groot, one Watcher, uh, 75 points of filler. I don't know. Beautiful, Simeon. I just yeah. I love I love it so much. It's beautiful. It is. Oh, hey, it is a really cool figure. It is a. I'll say the errata that they did makes it way more interesting to me than the way it was worded. Because sure, there was like an exploit they left, but now it's like it's not an exploit per se, because it doesn't necessarily like just let you heal a character to click one, but it is very interesting what like sidelines will look like. Hmm. How how incredibly curious. Uh, True, it does. It has changed like kind of the way I was rude to play Watcher for sure. Yeah. Interesting. uh, Is there a good Franklin to swap out? So I will say running Fantastic Four, the Franklin Richards that you swap into little boy Franklin, Simeon, for I guess more life. So oh, I, can, true. I can start with oh, the rare. Oh, man. Oh, no, though. No, it's no, Franklin Von Doom. You the Dang chase it. into the rare, but, like, no, the you can't do either. Death. They don't share names. Oh, yeah, right. Franklin Von Doom, Franklin Richards. Yeah, but oh, shoot. that would have been cool if uh, if the rare could have gone from, like, near Ooh, death to the rare can go chase. to the days of future past, Franklin Richards. <laughs> super depowered trash yes. one for six. Four points. Good old hold a box, Franklin. My favorite pizza delivery boy, Franklin. NPC Franklin Richards. Always holding that box, dude. Yeah. Um, you can definitely swap twenty-five point Franklin Richards to twenty point Franklin. Yeah, you can go from Franklin, Franklin, to, Franklin. to TK. Yeah, dude. Look at Stay that. A sidekick while you do it. A a sidekick. I mean, not for nothing. That is. Much fun on sleepovers. That is like a really long dial for a twenty-five point piece. I mean, I mean, yeah, sure. Do you want to do that? Yeah, dude. All right, we've talked about like how to like basically use Watcher in the least effective way possible. Yeah, I love that. There's better ways, but yeah, I like our ways. I like them too. Hey, guys, if you like our ways, or at least if you enjoyed the show a little bit this week, you can consider supporting us over on Patreon. Dot com, all sorts of cool stuff happens. I'm not going to super get into it. I get into it a lot this week. I'm excited for the Patreon giveaway this month, though, to give you guys a little sneak peek. I'll be giving away a full Kerr set of Disney Plus that is not going to include Primes, however, because I still don't even have a Power Broker Prime. Um, so, yeah. But I am going to be giving away the Commons on Commons Rares on uh, Disney Plus and some other cool, cool, neat stuff on the Patreon this week that you'll probably see a post about uh, probably sometime this week, I'd say. Also, big thing that we're doing, ton of stuff on the YouTube channel. Lots of fun stuff on the YouTube channel. We did our X of Swords tarot card gameplay this last week, our Clicks Busters episode. That's at 279 views, so thank you guys so much. That's like a really, really solid amount of views. We super appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, so we've been enjoying and that. I think even oh. if you don't watch the gameplay, um, if you just watch like the beginning and like the first couple seconds of gameplay, it does show how tarot cards are used. It's actually... Yeah. pretty simple and we had a fun time doing it and like we obviously weren't trying to be competitive or build four tarot cards but yeah i thought it was fun it brings more randomness to the game which is honestly in like a casual venue that's what 90 percent of our builds are is like adding yeah. some random factor to make the game more interesting Bro, like the most fun that i had had playing at rainbow in a long time was when we did our april fools event and with that there was three random effects that went into play every single game, three totally different random effects that happened. And they were pretty crazy. And this is sort of like, and like, that was like the most fun a ton of people had. Everybody was like, wow, this was so freaking fun. You know, like Lucas did tell us like specifically, you know, bring teams that are good for anything, you know, be prepared. And then like, still it was on the four shores, like stuff that would technically be like painful and you'd hate it. But it was, it was just wacky and it would be fun. Like, not being able to move more than four squares was, was funny and bad and weird. It was, okay, it was only bad because I was playing against uh, Jonah. Jonah Fleming, who was playing Batman Prime. Uh... Dirt, scumbag. Anyways. Uh, but yeah, so like, the, the tarot cards gave me that vibe of just like random stuff happening that you can't affect. 
you know, and it's just like, oh, well, this is reality now. And yeah. so in a casual <laughs> setting, that's so fun. Like the more random and like wacky is if it affects you and your opponent and it is, um, it's awesome. And yeah. I, I absolutely love that stuff. And so I big fan, big up on the tarot cards. And I've changed my tune quite a bit. You guys know this. I was very critical of tarot cards. I was like, man, I don't like them. I don't want to have to play against them all the time. Now I'm like, dang it, shoot! These were actually really fun to play with, and it, it did change my mind quite a bit. Yeah, I will. I will say, um, because of Scott Porter's unboxing, it doesn't look like you get a not necessarily guaranteed a full set of tarot cards in a brick, which is a little sad. You do get a full set in the starter, and then you get like random ones for participating in. And by by a full set, I do, I don't mean all seventy eight. I mean enough to play by WizKids rules, and then you do get um, some major Arcana ones through participating in the organized play. But here's the thing: if you're playing casually, if you're playing at like a local venue, and you tell people ahead of time this is what's going on, or if you're just playing kitchen tabletop and you just want to add some random elements, the rules don't matter. You can do whatever you want with the cards. Like you can put. 20 major arcanas you can make up new ones like cards against x of swords you can just make it up as you go you know just mix and match like play whatever you want like as long as everyone's having fun and it works for you the rules really don't matter outside of like competitive play and organized play um and when it when it comes to organized play i mean these might be a headache people that build with these are going to be able to do some crazy shenanigans stuff that we've seen but again if you're not in that kind of mindset already where you really want to game the game where you really want to like mess with the metrics of hero clicks then uh if you're already in that mindset it won't bother you because this is just one more thing you know just like id cards just like retaliators just like swap teams just like keyword cheating just like uh objects special objects whatever equipments like this, right. it is a new element. It does different stuff. It does have a zero point cost. But as far as friendly games go, I think that it's, it's super fun. easy to fun. make it fun or just ignore completely, I guess. I mean, just sell them to me. I'll probably be paying and Meanable. trading for a stupid amount for my whole lot. set. But uh, yeah, guys, that's, that's the YouTube. That's the Patreon plug. Uh, if you want to send us an email or ask us questions like Will Holland did, Go ahead, do that on our Facebook. Send us a message. Do that on Twitter. Dial H four. That's F O. No, sorry, it's not F O R E. It's the number four. Uh, <laughs> Hero clicks on Twitter. If you want to send us messages there to ask us questions, or send us an email at dial H or Hero clicks at gmail dot com. We love getting emails. Awesome. So uh, it doesn't happen a ton, but we love it when people like sit down and type out an email. It's really great, and we super appreciate that. So that's all. That's all our fun plugs. We're also uploading. Uh, some shorts videos on YouTube. Let me know what you guys think of those. Simeon and I are putting in some work. Simeon more so than I. Um, making content specifically, maybe more of our short form uh, video content. content we already made. Shorts. It'll, it's going to be stuff we already we made, just... edited down. Yeah. Like best of type stuff. So Simeon's got a fun little segment from Hot Ones. Uh, our Hero Clicks Hot Ones game is there. So if you guys think of any fun things you want, maybe best of or yeah. something like that. Segments yeah, actually, edited in the shorts. You... Send them on, if send you them do way. have a Tell favorite video or like a favorite segment from a video, especially from Thursday Throwdowns, because we did fifty plus episodes of Thursday Throwdowns. So if there's anyone that like, really there's remembers, like oh, like this part where you guys like started laughing and like you know lost control of the game, whatever something silly happened. Anyone that's got anything like that. Um, I don't want to rewatch all 50, some of those, to try and find fun things. So I'm mostly going to stick to our in-person gameplay stuff because those are much easier and there's a lot fewer of those. But, um, yeah, hit me up with anything you guys want to see in short format. I'd love to, you know, get more people watching. I mean, obviously not, like, the full-length videos because that requires an hour of time. But, uh, like, the Hot Ones one where it's just a funny little segment where you see people take damage in more ways than one. <laughs> oh, so true. So much damage. Oh, it hurt me so bad. Yes. And if you want to take damage and it, you want it to hurt you so bad, go and check out Cool Stuff Inc.'s prices on these Disney Plus chases. Ouch. That's a lot of damage. Uh, 
Disney Plus is out of stock for the most part on Cool Stuff Inc. At least the sealed stuff is. But uh, they do have the full set of all the commons, uncommons, rares, super rares, the parallel rares, which is what we call primes, um, and the the LEs, the uh, the Spider Man, and the maps and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but they've also got like you know older stuff. If you want to stockpile some Silver Age stuff, if you want to build those generic teams that we talked about, you want to pick up some of those value objects and figures and whatever have you. Uh, check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Like always, happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. Now, are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Over How they, six uh, people humor? think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools it's not witcher nonsense i'm gonna make hero clips like that forever <laughs> are you kidding me hey google attack someone let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk Happy trails. 